Hi there guys, welcome to another video about how to mod your emulation station or arcade one up. In today's video I'm going to be going through with you, I'm going to be showing you how to do a different splash screen every time you load a game up. So normally when you start off emulation station, unless you've got a pre-built image, you're going to have a splash screen that looks a little bit like this. A rather drab affair, it does what it needs to do, it tells you where it's doing everything, but you can have some interesting stuff. So if you're wanting a splash screen that looks a little bit like this, then stick around because I'm going to show you how to do just that. So just a little bit of a background about how this actually works first of all. In the RetroPie configuration menu, you've got the run command configuration. Now in there, when we load that up, what that's going to show you in there is, uh, in here you have got number four says launch image delay in seconds currently four. So that means whatever image you put on there is going to be on there for four seconds. So if you set your options to number one to be enabled, number two disabled, number three disabled, and number four for however long you want that image to be on there, then we're off to a good start. The other thing that you need on here before you actually start doing anything is you need to go to show IP. So you need to have your Raspberry Pi set up to be on your network to be able to do this. So to get the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, you go to the show IP, and in here it will show you what your IP address is. Uh, and mine is written at the top there, so that's it there. 192.168.0.124. So that's the, that's the IP address that I'm going to need to be able to put these images onto my computer. So we can come out of this now, uh, and I'm going to go over to the laptop, and I'm going to show you how to put these brand new images on there. So now we're back over at the laptop here, guys, and there's a couple of things I'm going to show you. But first of all, I'm going to show you how to create the image that you're going to actually put as your launching screen for your emulators when you load them up. Now, I prefer to do this as a PowerPoint file because I like using PowerPoint. I am by no means a design expert. I can barely use a pen and pencil at the best of times, but PowerPoint is where it's at, so I'm going to show you how to use PowerPoint to create it. So what I've done is I've just loaded up the template that I've, I used for the Famicom disk system there. Now, what I've done for you guys is I've put all these templates into a Dropbox folder, and I'm going to put the link to the Dropbox in the, the video description. So if you want to go and click on it, download them all, have a play with them, that's completely down to you, but they're there for you if you want to have a look at them, and they're a good starter just in case you, you want a bit of a handy tip as to what to do. But to go with the Famicom disk system ones, I just literally put what I need to do, stick it on there, play around with it if I need to, if I want to put my own name in there, if I want to put a uh, NGR buttons, and why wouldn't I want to do that? And click save and it'll just save it. Now, you need to save this in a very specific format and name to make it work. So you need to go file, save as. I'm going to save this on the desktop. I'm going to change the, the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation type down there. And it needs to be saved as a .png type. So it's portable network graphics format, a .png type, and it needs to be called launching .png. It needs to be called that, and I'll show you why later on, but it needs to be called launching .png. I'm going to save that to the desktop, and I'm going to do it for the current slide only. There we go. So we're done with PowerPoint now. I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to drag the file that we've just made there. So there's a the launching. So that's how you create... A, uh, a splash screen that you want for your launching screen as long as it's a 4x3 format it can be any size that you want as long as it's 4x3 then you'll get your dimensions correct for your screen on there so now I'm going to show you how to put that onto your Raspberry Pi so once we've got the image created then we do need to actually get it onto the Raspberry Pi somehow and there is a couple of different ways of doing that so I'm going to show you a couple of ways now the first way is nice and simple but it does take a slightly longer I find so the first way we've got to do it it's to log in it using the uh, file explorer that you've got on Windows. If you go into your top bar then type in backslash backslash RetroPie and press enter and it loads up this, this screen which is now connected to your Raspberry Pi. If you open up configs and then you're going to find Famicom Disk System which is the one that we've just done on there. So we're going to load up Famicom Disk System and it's a case of dragging launching.png and putting it in there. Now, for some reason, doing it this way, copying files to this, uh, copying files to the Raspberry Pi or back off the Raspberry Pi takes a little bit of time. It takes a bit longer. So there is another way to do it. And, and that other way of doing it is this. 
So to do that, we need to use a program called WinSCP. Now you need this because this messes around with the root directory and various other technical things in the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so we're going to go into WinSCP now. You can find this on, uh, if you go and Google it, you can find it. And this is where we need the IP address that we saved a little bit earlier on. So in my case, it's this. The username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. Unless you've changed it, but this is the default one. And then we're going to log in. Now, once we've logged in and your Pi is on the network and everything's from Kidori, we need to go to a certain point in the actual directory. So we need to go up a couple of levels and go to the main root directory. And I'm going to put this on the screen underneath, but we need to go into OPT, RetroPi, Configs. And in here is the configuration folders and files for every single emulator that we've got. So they're all on there. Every single one that's available to be uh, to be used on this system is all on here. So we've just done the Famicom disk system. So we need to find FDS. And then we need to drag that launching, for, uh, that launching uh, file that we made earlier on and drag it into there. And we'll give it a couple of seconds to, uh, to boot into there. Now if I open up my capture card now, I'll just open up my capture card. So I've got my capture card over. So this is my capture card. It might be a bit jerky because I've got a few things open at once here, but here's my capture card. And if I go and find a Famicom disk system, uh, let's find Famicom disk system. There we are, there's Famicom disk system. And if I load up Bubble Bobble, for example, And there we are. We get the splash screen with NGR buttons on there as well. And that, that's how it's done. It's as simple as that, guys. And you can have your splash screen stay on for longer if you really want to. If you had the, uh, you just need to change that time that you had a little bit earlier on. But it's as simple as that, guys. And like I say, I'm going to put in the comments in the description setting a link to my Dropbox where you can download the templates. These templates that we had a little bit earlier on for all the different systems. So you can have a little bit of a play as well. But that's it for this video. Any questions, just give me a shout. And if not... I'll see you next time on Noob Game Reviews.